Hey, what's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and the season of Dawn is on and kicking. And with it, of course, we got our brand new six-player activity, The Sundial. Now, the activity itself, I think, is pretty fun. It's basically like a natural evolution of the menagerie. It's structured in a very similar manner. You and five other players will head into this activity. You've got several different ways with different objectives and different bosses to take down. Every time you take down a boss and complete an objective, you move on to the next round until you reach the final round where you take on Nerul, a new Scion Flare boss with some very familiar mechanics. You can unlock this activity by going through the storyline that starts with Osiris on Mercury. But in this video, we're going to be breaking down exactly how the Sundial works, how you can beat it, and what rewards you can get from it right now. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. Now, first things first, like I said, you can unlock the sundial by going through the initial line of quests that Osiris will have for you. If you head on over to the new loading zone in Mercury, speak with the big man himself, he'll get you started. The first thing you're going to have to do is activate an obelisk. This obelisk will be located on the Tangled Shore. And this system is actually kind of interesting. The way the obelisks work is you go to different loading zones. Right now, the two we have active are on the Tangled Shore and on Mars and you complete a series of objectives to get the obelisk up and running. For the Tangled Shore, first, you'll need to take down 50 Cabal and collect 50 Sundial components. You can actually do this faster by taking them down with solar abilities or solar weapons. And it won't take you long. Head over to Sorix's Cut, you'll be done with this step in no time. Once you've got the 50, head back to Thieves Landing, deposit them, and you'll be on to the next step. After that, you'll need to collect light by killing enemies with either your abilities or your super. Again, this step is fairly simple. Just head out there, get super kills, get ability kills, and before you know it, you will have built up enough light. Head back to the obelisk, deposit it, and basically you're done. This will reactivate the obelisk, creating a brand new vendor for you where you can pick up some specific weapon bounties, view a new upgrading system for different mods and benefits, and link the obelisk to the sundial activity itself. After you finish with this, congratulations, you'll be ready to run the sundial. So let's go ahead and jump over to that. Now, like I said before, the Sundial is very similar to the Menagerie. You and five other Guardians are going to load in and you're going to have a series of objectives and encounters to complete. So we're going to go over each of these encounters here. First up, we've got Bombardment. You're going to find Cabal who are going to spawn in with an unbreakable shield. This is the encounter we got to see on Bungie's livestream last week. Here, in order to break the immune Centurion shield, you're going to need to take down two Solar Centurions who will drop beacons. It's pretty easy to tell where these enemies are. They look kind of like the high value targets that you fight in Gambit and Gambit Prime. But once you've taken them down, grab those beacons, throw them at the immune Centurion and you will break his shield. He gets bombarded with this attack from the ships above. It actually looks pretty cool. Once his shield is down, you'll have a little bit of time to take him out. Do so until this section is completed. Once you've gotten that done, move on. The next encounter we're gonna talk about is Data Mine. In this section, your goal is to stand on plates while clearing ads. You basically need to stand on a plate until your progress hits 100. Additionally, some mechanics from the Leviathan are going to pop up here. Throughout the encounter, Scion commanders will show up and pop a shield around themselves. You can't shoot through the shield. Anybody who's completed that initial raid in Destiny 2 will know you need to jump inside the shield, melee the Scion commander, and then you'll be good to go. Once the plate is clear, a boss will spawn. Take them down and then there will be another two plates where you'll need to repeat this cycle. So stand on plates, take out adds, bop the Scion Commanders, beat the boss, and you're good to go. After that, we've got the encounter Gate Crash. This one's pretty interesting. In it, three Vex Minotaurs are going to spawn near the Vex Gate. When you take them down, they'll drop an Arc Charge. Pick that Arc Charge up and deposit it at any of the stations near where you start this encounter at. Once you've done so, a Cabal boss will spawn back at the Vex Gate. Take him down and repeat as necessary. Once you've completed these three different encounters, you're going to move on to the final round, where you'll fight Nerul, the Hollow Voice, a new Scion Flare. And this boss fight is pretty cool. Again, they're going to introduce mechanics from the Leviathan. Nerul has the ability to put an invulnerability shield over herself. And once she does this, several Scion Commanders are going to spawn across the battlefield. By now you know what to do with those. Jump into their bubble, melee them, and when you've taken them all down, Nerul's shield will drop, allowing you to damage her once again. And that's basically the mechanic to beating her. But she does one other Leviathan reference that might catch you off guard if you never played that raid. 
She has the ability to drop you in a mini detain bubble that's similar to the shadow realm that Callus used to bring you to. If you get caught up in one of these, don't panic, it's pretty easy to get out. There will be little moving crit spots all over the detain bubble. If you shoot these darkened areas, you'll be able to break yourself out. If you don't, you'll immediately be wiped. So, whenever you get caught up in one of these bubbles, make sure you break yourself out. But other than that, repeat the mechanics here, damaging the boss, taking down the Scion Commanders, removing yourself from the bubble, and going back to damaging the boss again. And you'll beat Nerul in no time flat. And that's it. That is how you can unlock and complete the Sundial activity in Destiny 2 Shadowkeep's Season of Dawn. Now, the last real thing to talk about here, of course, is the reward system that's tied to this, because it's kind of an interesting mix of the Vex Offensive and the Menagerie reward system that we had back with Big Daddy Callus. So this time around, the rewards that you get, the reward system that's tied to the Sundial, is actually linked to those obelisks that you activated earlier and tied to the activity itself. Upon completion of the Sundial and defeating Nerul, you'll be able to head back to the main area and select the reward that you want to receive, a randomized version of some new weapons. And the cool thing here is that the weapons that are going to be available for you to choose from are actually tied to the obelisk that you currently have hooked up to the sundial, meaning that the rewards that we've got available in this activity are actually going to change as we activate and connect more and different obelisks to the sundial activity itself. Remember, right now, the only obelisks that you can connect to the sundial are the Tangled Shore obelisk, which allows you to choose from the Steel Feather Repeater Auto Rifle or the Breach Light Sidearm, you know, as your ultimate reward for completing the Sundial, and the Obelisk located on Mars, which will allow you to choose from the Martyr's Retribution Grenade Launcher or the Line in the Sand Linear Fusion Rifle. So you can actually change the rewards that are available in the Sundial by heading back to those Obelisks and linking different ones to the Sundial itself. It looks like right now you can only have one Obelisk linked to the Sundial at a time. But honestly, this is a pretty cool way to kind of swap up the reward system with this activity, and we know that we're going to be activating additional obelisks on additional planetary spaces as we move into the future. So there are going to be even more rewards to earn. But alright, there we go, Guardians. That is how you can unlock the Sundial, curate your own rewards, and get to earning them. Now, if you... Uh, Want to earn more of these randomized rolls without running the Sundial activity, the rolls that are tied to, you know, some of the obelisks out there, you can actually do so once you've unlocked these obelisks either on Mars or on the Tangled Shore and rank them up a bit by spending what's called Polarized Fractaline at them, which you can earn by unlocking the obelisks themselves and by completing some of the bounties tied to them, you gain access to new weapon bounties tied to these obelisks as well. These function kind of similar to the way the forge bounties worked with the weapon frame and the system that was brought with that. You'll be able to pick up timeless lost weapon bounties from both of these obelisks, complete the objectives that are on them, and upon completion, they will grant you random rolled versions of the weapons that you can get from the sundial as well. You'll be able to unlock more and more of these bounties as you continue to upgrade your obelisk. And from the Tangled Shore, these bounties will get you access to the Steel Feather Repeater Auto Rifle, the Black Scorpion 4SR Scout Rifle, and the Breach Light Sidearm. While for the Mars Obelisk, you'll be able to get Martyr's Retribution, the new grenade launcher, a bounty for the Bygone's Pulse Rifle, and finally, the Line in the Sand Linear Fusion Rifle. Giving you a great alternative way to earn this stuff if you don't want to keep playing the Sundial or linking your Obelisk to that activity. Cool stuff. But alright, that is it for this one, Guardians. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully it answered some of your questions out there. If you've got any more, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. This is just the first of plenty of things we've got to cover for this season of Dawn because there's a surprising amount of content in there right off the bat. Really excited for what's coming in the future. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But I'm out for now. As always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.